We will start up Mechanical and then we'll briefly go over the interface and then guide you through setting up the model which includes assigning materials, creating connections, meshing, setting up the boundary conditions and applying the loads and then finally solving the model. By the end of this module you will understand the process for setting up the analysis and will be able to use the same tools for any other model you may create on your own. So let's pick up from where we left off in the project schematic view. Now that we created our geometry we can see that cell number 3 is up to date with the green check mark. This means we are now ready to launch mechanical. We can do this by either double clicking on cell number 4 or right clicking and then clicking on this edit button right here. So let's go ahead and click on this right now. So once inside the mechanical interface, at the top here we have the menus toolbar. So we have some basic menus such as the file menu, where you can save a project, export a project, the edit menu, the view menu where you can change different view parameters, the units menu where you can change your units, the tools menu where actually an important one here would be maybe the solve process settings, where if you click on this here you can click on advanced, and change the number of utilized cores for your analysis. And after that here you have the help menu. Next to the main menus we have a few toolbars here at the top. The first one right here is called the standard toolbar which contains commonly used application commands such as the solve button for solving an analysis or the section view button for creating sections. Below it is the graphics toolbar which contains commands that control the pointer mode or cause an action in the graphics window. Some important ones are the select mode here where you can change from a single select to a box select, the geometry filters where you can choose let's say a vertex or a body filter, so if we want to only choose a point on this geometry we can click on this point and now we can select the points on the geometry or if we wanted to only filter faces we can click on the face and now we're clicking only on faces. Next are the basic rotate, pan and zoom buttons. There is also a zoom to fit. If you're let's say too zoomed in you can go and click on this and it will zoom to fit. We have the set ISO button. So let's go ahead and do this right now. This resets the isometric view. So as we can see here the lifting lug is a bit towards the side and we kinda wanna maybe reset the isometric view to something more like this. So we can rotate this using the middle mouse button or the rotate view and now once we have this view in place we can click on the set ISO and then now we reset our isometric view so let's say if we rotate it around and we click on this button here to get back to the isometric view we can see now that the lifting lug is facing upwards. So following the graphics toolbar is the graphics options toolbar which provides quick access to features that are useful for controlling the graphical display of the models. So for example the first button right here which is show vertices essentially toggles on and off the vertices of the model. Another button right here is the wireframe which can toggle on or off wireframe mode. Uh, another one here would be show all coordinate systems. This one here would be to set random colors but this is for loads and name selections which we will get to maybe a bit later. And finally some annotation preferences where you can change a bunch of options here for your annotations. Next we have the explode view options toolbar where you can explode your model using this slider right here. And following that we have the edge graphics toolbar which provides access to graphic features pertaining to the edge display. However we won't be covering these two toolbars in this tutorial so let's go and remove them right now. We can click on the view tab right here and click on toolbars and then click on explode view options to remove the explode view options and then once again to click on the edge graphic options to remove that as well. So now we have slightly more space. Next we have the context toolbar which dynamically changes based on the type of object selected in the tree outline box here on the left. So because these options keep changing I will cover them as we go along in the tutorial. Next we have the tree outline window which provides a structured list of the objects included in a project and it will be the primary interface element of the application. And right below it is the details view window which gives details about each object selected from the tree outline. So selecting say the geometry object from the tree outline we can now see attributes and controls for this object such as the total volume in this view. Next in the center we have the geometry window 
which displays the model and where you can manipulate the visual representation of the model. Right below it, you can see three tabs, the first one being the geometry tab, which is the one that we're in right now, the second one being the print preview for printing, and the third one called report preview for generating reports, which we will go over later on in this course. Finally, we have the status bar at the bottom, which gives you some basic information such as the current units of the project. Now that we've covered the essentials of the mechanical interface, let's go ahead and start setting up our model.